right. Let's not pay attention to that timer because I screwed it up <laughs> and uh, I started futzing around and I didn't realize that I was actually going to be on camera. So then when I went back to the starting soon, it started the 10 minute timer over again. But we're here. It's three o'clock on a Monday and I want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, I think we're going to have a small crowd today. Uh, I've had to change my Monday, my Friday streams that I've been doing to Mondays because of my new schedule. So welcome to, for those of you with me today for uh, uh, joining me um, for part seven of my 77 part playthrough of Phantasmagoria 2. <laughs> uh, Happy New Year, everybody, uh, and, and uh, welcome back and thanks for, for coming back. And and I'm super excited about continuing this, uh, this game and all the stuff that we're gonna be doing uh, coming up. Um, the reason I uh, am doing Mondays for the next couple weeks, if you're not, uh, haven't been paying attention on Twitter or what have you, is uh, I got cast in a play um, here in Seattle and I'm gonna be performing that play uh, next, the end of this month through all of February. And we're in rehearsals for it right now. So my schedule is is crazy and I just don't have uh, uh, the time that I've had in the past. So Mondays are our day off from rehearsals. So that's why I'm doing this uh, today. And that's partly why I've got the, the bushy Santa Claus in the making beard. Uh, I'm, I'm playing a, a middle-aged guy with his wife on their 24th wedding anniversary. And uh, they are in Egypt on a business trip, and they're combining it with their, their wedding anniversary. And he falls in love with his Egyptian interpreter, and all kinds of mayhem ensues. It's a very funny, but also very kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's a good drama, comedy, drama, dramedy, drama comedy. Uh, and, uh, and I get to do it with um, the woman playing my wife is my friend Jen Taylor. Uh, there's a, let's see if I can get a picture. There's me and Jen right there. Jen is an actor I have known for a long time here in Seattle. We've done numerous plays together. Uh, we started a theater company together back in 2010 that ran for about 10 years. Is that about right? That's about right. 2008 ran for about 10 years. And, uh, and that's going to be awesome. It's already awesome working with her again. But you might know Jen not as a stage actor, but as Cortana who is the voice of Cortana on Halo. So Jen has been kind enough to uh, agree to be my next guest. So we'll be streaming, um, we'll be doing a live stream of uh, talking to Jen about her experience uh, being Cortana for 20 years now and all of her other work in, um, in numerous games that she's done. And so uh, we'll have her join us It'll be a Sunday. Uh, normally we've done Saturdays, but again, cause of scheduling, it's gonna be Sunday the 23rd at 11 a.m. So please mark your calendars and I'd love for you to join us for that. Um, let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, oh, I have this. Uh, hope, hoping, every, no, hoping everybody can hear me. I'm seeing people are responding to some of the things. I'm, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons. Uh, okay, beginning of the year just means there's a long ways to, to get better. Um, let's see, I've got my little Patreon thing. Thank you though for those of you who are part of the Patreon family. For those of you who aren't, please consider it. I do want to just give a little bit of love to my Patreon members and... Uh, this is our group of $10 and above folks. Um, and Romulo, I want you to know that I realized we are, we spelled your name wrong and I didn't have time to, to change it. So we'll make sure your last name is spelled right in, in the future. But th thanks to all these people and all the three to $5 member uh, peoples as well as the reason we can, we can do this. Uh, we can do this series and continue to grow. So thank you so much for that. And if you're, if you're, uh, open to joining, please do so. I always forget to ask people to join our YouTube, to please follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel, like all of our videos and all that stuff, because it does really help with the algorithms to get uh, more people to see it. Um, 
but I don't feel like talking about <laughs> social media right now. Um, oh, a couple things. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the Victoria, having Victoria Hemmings and Morsel. That was our last guest just before the, uh, the new year. I thought she was just fantastic. And I was so, so thrilled to talk to her. And she has um, tentatively agreed to play Phantasmagoria 1 with me in the future. So once we kind of get to the tail end and the ending or near the end of playing Phantas 2, um, I will invite her sometime in February or March and she and I will play uh, as much of Phantas 1 as I can get her to uh, to commit to. So that'll be really fun to uh, have her play her game after I've played mine. Um, so that should be a good time. And let's see what else. Um, Today, because of the scheduling conflict, uh, my my normal uh, hint keeper partner, uh, Daniel Albu, is not available this Monday or next. But I have am kind I'm lucky enough to have reached out to uh, a couple of my Patreon members uh, who are very versed in all things Phantasmagoria 2. And today, our special guest hint keeper is going to be uh, uh, Chris McGee, and I'm going to invite. Chris to, to join me right now. And there he is. Oh, of course, everything. Let's see if we can get you on here. How you doing, Chris? Are you there? Oh, yes, I am here. How are you doing? I'm good, buddy. Thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my privilege. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There we go. Just going to line you up. Of course, it, the, the, there we go. Let me fix your so tell me, Chris, uh, you and I have talked a few yes. times. You actually helped me a little bit during, um, as I continue to struggle with and get better with uh, uh, OBS. Uh, but I know you do some of your own games. And tell me, how did you find, uh, how did you find us? And, and tell me your, your, your sort of history with Fantas 2. Oh, goodness. Well, I think like most people, I was were first drawn to Phantasmagoria 2 because it was uh, sort of one of those uh, kind of forbidden titles that your parents don't want you to play, yet you somehow managed to snag a copy and play it anyway. Exactly. Um, and of course, it was a sequel to Phantasmagoria 1, and that was so groundbreaking, so many CDs, and with all the FMV and the voice acting, etc., and I love to be on the cutting edge. So that's another reason why I got that. And I just enjoyed playing those games. Um, love all of the FMV titles from that era. And as far as finding uh, conversations with Curtis, I think it was uh, there was a video that dropped like late 2000 to, or 19, or excuse me, 2019 early 2020 that you had posted on youtube and uh that's what alerted me to the fact that you were starting this series and i absolutely had to be a part of it oh that's great that's great well i sure appreciate it. you've been with me from pretty much for for quite a while and I, I really appreciate your your support and all that so so we'll start to play this game in in a little bit and uh please keep me on track and uh don't let me miss too many things and uh and let's uh, let's just have fun kind of getting to where we were so um uh thanks for that so one of, one of the things i want to do now is uh, uh to there we go there i am <laughs> Uh, in the last time we played, we were we did the me the, the mental hospital where uh, Curtis escapes, and I remember when we talked with Lorelai, she had written an entire scene where uh, there was this big chase scene and a big fight and all that stuff that did not get filmed. You just basically see him run away. He gets caught right away, and then he's back in the uh, he's back in the um, electroshock room. But I thought I would share with you before we we move forward the, uh, the the portion of the script that actually has the chase scene in it. And so I thought I would just read some of this to you. I still don't feel fully comfortable releasing this script because I haven't gotten uh, Lorelai's uh, blessing yet. Uh, but I'm going to reach out to her about that soon, and maybe we can just 
make this available to our Patreon members and entice other Patreon members to join us by getting a chance to read the script. But I'm going to share this little portion of it with you. And uh, this is, you'll see, move this down a little bit, make sure we're in good shape. So you see that says click on the buckle of the wheelchair strap. So that's where, uh, this is where, um, there's a number of scenes. It gets, it's a very confusing, but let's do it. So the nurse says, stop that right now, or I'll have you sedated. The first time while the nurse is gone, Curtis will undo the buckle and spring up from the wheelchair. Clicking on the corridor will start the first person perspective section. Rat woman runs, it says, run freak, run, run. I think she does that in the game. Um, click on lunatic one, sticks its tongue out at Curtis. Click on lunatic two, lunatic two shakes its head and says, no, 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 no. And which is, I believe, uh, Laura Lai herself who did that. And then we get to some interesting stuff that is not in the game. It says, click on lunatic four, uh, go away, go away. Things like that don't happen. And then it says the rat woman's random prayer. The rat woman is sitting under a table, muttering her prayers. The player can click on her in between prayer verses. She just repeats the verses over and over. O oh, most depraved and filthy rat, God of the flea, God of the plague, God of pus and pestilence and puke, hear thy disease-ridden servant. Bring the pain, bring the stench, bring the black vomit and shuddering death. Um, bring down the plague, O oh, rat unclean. Bring down the plague. Hmm. Laura lies ahead of the game here. Bring down the plague on us all. Wow. Uh, so the rat woman had some stuff that never got filmed. So maybe we need to reach out to uh, Vijoy and, and talk to her about her experience in Phantasm 1 and this. Uh, I, wonder, I don't remember if she filmed these or not. But anyways, anyways we get to the mental hospital. And I'll, I hope this is interesting. Tell me if this is interesting. Um, it's a maze of hallways and doors. The player must duck around corners to hide from guards and find items that will allow him to get through the various doors and out into the parking lot. If the player is caught before reaching the parking lot, the electroshock cartoon will be triggered at that point and the player won't get to see the parking lot cartoon, which we, of course, never get to see. Hot spots, door two, door three, glass lobby doors, the paper with the big paper clip, the second nurse's station, the fire extinguisher, the keys, orderly one, orderly two, the chair, orderly three. So, Anytime Curtis grabs the paper clip and throws away the papers, the paper clip goes into inventory. The fire extinguisher, it goes into inventory and he carries it around. So he screams, back off, man, let me pass or I'll kill you, I swear it. Orderly one spins around and hits Curtis in the face. Curtis falls, this ends the mental hospital section. So I think what it is is that there are numerous ways to get out and if you don't click the right button, I get, I get, you know, kicked out and uh, you go to the electroshock room. Uh, what else? Orderly spins around and sees Curtis. Curtis hesitates, hits the orderly with the fire extinguisher. Orderly goes down. His keys fall out of his pocket. Curtis drops the fire extinguisher, looking down at the orderly with a fierce expression. The fire extinguisher is out of inventory. Back to first person. What else? Curtis tries the door. It's locked. He quickly unlocks the door. We see orderly two enter the door. He sits down at a chair that is by the door and picks up a newspaper. We have five seconds in which to click on him. Uh, if the player does not click on orderly two, his beeper will go off. He curses and gets up and walks to the side corridor. So uh, let's see, what else? Curtis grabs the orderly, slams him up against the wall and threatens him. Look, I'm getting out of it. I'm getting out of here. Don't try to stop me and you won't get hurt. And the orderly says, okay. Uh, back to the electroshock room. So anyways, it goes on and on. Uh, kind of fun, fun things that were not filmed. You can click on the chair, click on the orderly with the chair, chair in the glass door lobbies. So, and then we get to the movie expires and we are eventually back with everybody at WinTech and when he wakes up, which is where we we ended uh, our last playthrough. What do you think of this, this Chris? Is this uh, interesting stuff? 
I think it's fascinating kind of pulling back the curtain a little bit, seeing what, what happened behind the scenes. I like how each of the various different actions is numbered with specific numbers so they can keep track of which action leads to which scene and which video needs to play. Yeah, I like that. that's pretty cool stuff. So this uh, leads us to today's playthrough. So we've just, uh, we've just been revived from this flashback and uh, we are, are off to the dreaming tree with Trevor. So here we go. Um, when you, let's make sure I get, just want to make sure everything can be heard. You guys can hear some fans, some, some people in the background. I'm going to click on Trevor here and let's give it a go. All right. Hey Trev, what's with the shake? Aren't you worried about your tiny waistline there? Just drowning my sorrows, bud. <laughs> yeah, I admit it. I'm uh, feeling some delayed nerves about poor old Bob. Yeah, <clears throat> I got kind of freaked out this afternoon myself. Oh, God, it was just so weird sitting there, you know, right where he got splattered. All right. Well, uh, it's great to see. Uh, this is, you know, Trevor. This is so many people's favorite character in the game. Um, I love hearing all the, <laughs> all the restaurant voices, though you can't see anybody anywhere. And all we've got is one milkshake. So these guys, I don't. No wonder this business probably went out of out of business because these guys never ordered anything. So let's see what else Trevor has to say. What? <laughs> you remember my uh, my Aunt Emily, the one that lives uh, in Arizona out in the desert? And the one that likes the animals. Yeah, that's the one. She uh, she always tosses her, her dinner leftovers outside for the uh, the poor little woodland creatures, you know? Woodland. Yeah, I thought she lived in the desert. Shut up, my story. <laughs> so anyway, one, one time when I was there, she hauls back. She tosses this old mangy big yucky baked potato outside and it was beautiful I mean, that woman has an arm like a pro ball player and that spud just arced through the air until this sweet little bunny rabbit came hopping out of the bushes right into the path of destruction no way way afraid so <laughs> and that tater hit mr bunny right between the ears you know for a moment it looked like a little brown german hump <laughs> I've never seen a bunny rabbit jump that high in my life. You think that's funny? That poor rabbit is probably in therapy right now. <laughs> it's so funny. I, these are great scenes, and uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's, I'm going to turn down our, our restaurant folks a little bit here uh, so I can talk. Um, you know, filming these always made sense to me just in the in the, in the sense of the story. But now that I'm playing it as a game, I, I'm fascinated by the fact that these scenes between Trevor and Curtis don't really move the plot in any way forward. It's really just cementing their friendship and uh, and sort of these, these quirky, lovely little stories. If you haven't seen, by the way, um, the interview I did with Paul Mitri, which was, I think, the second, no, the third uh, conversation with Curtis uh, chapter. Uh, I actually have Paul and I read that scene. So it's really fun to see Paul today reading that exact same scene. And he's just as good and had just as much fun doing it over Zoom that he did there. So, okay, so there we go. Got a couple of little scenes. Let's see what else we got. Clearly, there's nothing else to do here. We can only talk to Paul, only talk to Trevor. Interesting painting back there. Nice little splash of red. I wonder if that's art design or that just happened to be left behind in the, the restaurant. All right, here we go. Trev, seriously, um, have you ever had really horrible thoughts? Well, like what? 
Wanting to kill someone? Trev, I wanted to kill Bob. Every time he laughed at me, I just wanted to fucking kill him. Yeah. Everybody feels that way once in a while, man. Don't worry about it. Huh? Yeah, someone just said, uh, Soapbox says, it's just nice to see them talk, and I agree. And I think we are heading towards uh, getting, you know, some plot elements going here, trying to get Trevor to help help him figure out what's going on. Um, and, oh, Dark Wolf just said, oh, no. Goosey Whispers said that I need to save more often. I imagine you might agree with that, um, Chris. Um, he said that there are. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> he says that there are some. I'm going to. I have the potential to die is coming up pretty quickly. So uh, if I, he says, when I pressed try again instead of load, the game would crash to Windows. So save more often. All right. Well, we just started. So you tell me when to save. I think we're okay for now, unless you want me to save right now. I think you're all right. Okay. Sounds good. Any any thoughts on your on your end, Chris? Uh, as far as yeah, just sort of like plot. this, this oh. yeah, just the relationship between Trevor and and, and oh. Cur Curtis here. Yeah, I, I I actually like the fact that they're building up this relationship with this dialogue, so that not to spoil anything that's going to happen in the future, but some of the scenes that will happen are a little more hard hitting, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you need it. Just really gets us. I mean, Kurt, uh, Trevor has been so. He's just been so fun and, and goofy and just a good, you know, sort of comic character throughout. But now we're really getting a sense of uh, just his humanity and, and, uh, and such. And so that does make what happens later a little bit more hard to hard to take. Mm -hmm. So, all right, here we go. All right, next one. Hey, listen, man, I got to go. I've uh, got a date for dinner. Someone new? Well, tell me about him. No, okay. His name's Mike, <laughs> and um, I met him at the pre-raffle at the downtown. And he's smart and funny and cuter than hell. That's great. Well, have a good time. I'm going to try. You know, so much has been talked about, and I have to say so many people have reached out to me um, uh, throughout this whole process uh, talking, and we've, we've talked in, in great detail about this, but um, anybody who's just watching this playthrough for the first time, I think it's important to, to, to talk about just the, the relationship between Trevor and, uh, uh, and Curtis and this sense of complete acceptance of Trevor's uh, sexuality and his, uh, who he is and without any judgment uh, for a long time. How Curtis and Trevor should get together. Um, what I found kind of fascinating is I feel like Trevor is by far the most, uh, he seems like the most, what's the word? He, he, he seems to have the most sense of reality of anybody in, in the game. And I think that he realizes that Curtis would not be a person to get involved with physically uh, at this, uh, you know, in, in his current state. And I think he's just a, a, a great friend which just makes his character even more interesting. And so I find that that wonderful. And of course, Paul Mitri and uh, his his interpretation of the character based on Lorelei's uh, writings just really made that character a, a fascinating one, especially for people who who were growing up playing games and not seeing that type of character anywhere. And I think that in many ways, this is why we're still here because of the relationship between, between uh, Curtis and, and Trevor and, and just how open it is and, and loving on so many levels. Uh, all right, that's my little soapbox for the moment. Where do I go now, Chris? I can go uh, it's your choice, uh, I, but uh, I would recommend maybe the apartment. Go back home for a bit. Yeah, we've had like and a long day at WinTech. We, I went in back in time to the thing. We just went and had a drink. I'm probably, I imagine it's the end of the day. I don't think I'm going back to work yet, so yeah, let's go home for a bit and see what's going on. And we've talked about, I remember talking with Gary Spinrad about how, you know, this, whenever you go into Curtis's apartment, there's that piano that's sort of 
discordant piano and it's it's pleasant but it's not uh you know it, it's it's off a little bit and if i recall as the game we get deeper and deeper in the game the that music gets even more discordant it becomes less uh pleasant so we'll kind of keep an eye on that as we as we go all right well i guess i'll just explore a little bit and see what's what's going on here oh of course there's the mirror before I do the mirror, should I check something else out? Is there anything else I can do? There's nothing else in here, is there? Nothing else to get. Okay. And can't go in there. I guess they want me to look at the mirror. Okay. Let's do that. Oh yeah, we've seen this scene. We we showed this a bunch during our Again, I think uh, we've talked about, you know, how much time we had at the beginning uh, with filming. And I think that this, I know that this was filmed early on. And, you know, so all the close-ups, all the quick edits, all the different coverage they got, uh, all that stuff was uh, in play here, as opposed to a little bit later when they had to scale things down a little bit. But yeah, that's a, I thought that's a really cool scene. I like how quiet it is. There's so much going on. It'll be interesting to, to to count how many cuts there were in that scene um but yeah okay so things are not things are not getting any more normal for curtis here um let's go talk to blob yeah what's up blob hey carol rats are so much better than people no, you're the only one I can really count on. How touching, freak boy. Oh man, not even Blob can can't even count on her anymore. All right, let's go talk to her again. Maybe that was just a misunderstanding. <sighs> Relax, Craig. It's only Blob. The only thing that loves you. I don't know about that. I'm looking at, uh, hey, so folks, tell me, I'm, I'm noticing a little bit of lag, as always, with the audio. Um, if it becomes a problem, let me know, and I will, I think the best thing to do is just turn the game off for a second and turn it back on. But um, uh, I, I'll keep going unless unless it's starting to, to bug people. All right. Um, all right, so that's all we got with Blob. Here, oh, okay. We got some. We got a bookshelf. No phone. Nothing there. All right, let's try the bookshelf here. Murder without the mess. Hmm. Music change. Enter the revolting psyche of Curtis Craig. Hey. <laughs> The revolting psyche of Curtis Craig. I don't know. Kind of creepy. Um, all right. I'm getting a sense that it's not that bad. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So, looks to me like this is it. Chris, am I missing anything? It is one thing that they need to do here that I, I don't know how they expected anyone to figure this out. Uh, something that you do with your inventory item here, a certain inventory item. All right. I don't know how specific you want me to be. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's see. It just depends on how. So let me see if there's something. Lace? Is there something to do with lace? Is it? No, it's not lace. Uh, what would it be here? Oh, you know, I know at some point. Let's see. Do I do that? Ooh. Ha! Second try. I think it's because I've seen this. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen these I've seen these videos before. I've never played the game, but I've seen a ton of the video footage. All right, so but now I got this 
Recurrent. Let me see if we can remember. So we found this in the in the storeroom when I opened up the 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 little trapdoor room, right? Is that where mm -hmm. that that was? Okay, and then I grabbed that, and then somebody drywalled that room back together. But I not before yep. I grabbed it. Okay, so now I want to. Oh, I need to do something now. I know what to do. I'm gonna get. No, don't I have a screw? Isn't there a screwdriver? Do I need a screwdriver? Yeah, there we go. Is that? Oh, oh you're not going to do that? Okay, so you, I know you want me to. Again, I've seen this movie before, but I don't know if I know that. Oh no! <laughs> so I know it's the hammer and the and the. Uh, and yeah, that. this was uh, something that Sierra did infrequently, but enough to drive people infuriate insane. some users. Where you can't just pick one item and click it on whatever's in the scene. Okay. You actually have to combine items okay. first. Oh, man. Okay. All right. But then, what that, 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 how do you And the way they do it in this game <laughs> is even worse than just simply taking one item and clicking it on another. Um, you take one item and oh. examine it first using the eyeball. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. So take it. Where's the eyeball? It's up here. I think right you have now. to use the hammer first. I'm not entirely oh, sure. God's sakes. Okay. And the <laughs> it might work the other way around. I haven't tried. Okay. So there's that. All right, now go over here. Oh yeah, this has to, this this. Mm -hmm. I think there are so many people that would have loved this game <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't give up in complete frustration. All right, so there we go. So now I do that, and now I can do this. All right. Yeah, I figured I'd save you that frustration. Yeah, that would have been that would have been the rest of our day. Oh, I remember this. So so you can just tell that these things they weren't even glued on. They were like they were like, you know, taped on with two sided tape. And so this idea of trying to, you know, to to hammer it down, it was just so it was just so cheesy it felt like i was miming the whole thing so but yeah that was uh that was me doing some hammer and screwdriver acting which i it looked convincing to me thank goodness I, you know, I went to school for that kind of stuff all right learn shakespeare and learn how to use tools to make it look like you know what you're doing all right see uh our our daddy's letter right and now what? Oh, I got it. Oh, so now I should read it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, I need to get out of here. And now... Okay, so now let's go ahead and read this thing. Back when I was wearing fake glasses, my eyes were perfect and I was wearing fake glasses. And now... Oh boy, look at him read. This is some good reading acting right here. Look at that, he's moving his mouth. You can tell it's some music. That's right, it's getting a little emotional. Oh, the hands to the face. Yeah, that's tough, yeah. yeah that's uh, I should have put that on my reel. That would have been, uh, that would have been, that could have got me way more way more parts in movies um okay so what's fascinating about that now don't we get a chance to read it so i think again you have to use the examine option by okay oh there we go there we go. there we go and then you can click on it but then and then the little magnifying glass lets you zoom in oh gotcha and then you go up. so yeah you know I've always found this fascinating. We actually had, you know, my very first episode of Conversations with Curtis, I reached out to Todd Lasea and I actually had him read this letter out loud. I'm, I'm, I'm mind, it's 
blows my mind that uh, they didn't think of this. Like that, that whole scene of me looking at the letter and emoting to it. What if we had been hearing uh, Jonas's voiceover? That just seemed like that was a, a you know, interesting, interesting choice that they did not make. But yeah, we get to read this now. And uh, I will, so basically it says, if you're reading this, I'm dead. I've been dead for a long time. I knew this was going to happen. I cannot avoid it. Before they come for me, I must confess to you, my only son. Wintech has been experimenting with forces it can't possibly control. So in the game, we this is the first time we really know that we're you know we're getting a real sense of what's going on. He's he's hacked into the computer, seen some stuff he shouldn't see, but this is really it. You must understand, Curtis, how excited I was at the prospect of working on something of this magnitude. I felt it could be important, beneficial to the entire human race. So dad was really trying to do some good work. He got so immersed in the pure science of the thing that he forgot his humanity. The Threshold Project is not in itself an evil thing, but as long as it's in the hands of Paul Warner, nothing good can come of it. They've done terrible things. People have died. I've tried to quit Wintech to take you away with me and leave, but they won't let me. They've threatened your life. So at this point, I'm still a little kid he's writing to. I can barely live with myself now, knowing how horribly this project has hurt you. If I cannot risk losing you altogether, if I stay, they have promised to care for you. You're probably a man now, or very nearly a man. You will have been raised in the bosom of Wintech, a child of this monstrous corporation. I hope they have been kind to you. But now you must leave here, Curtis. Get far from Wintech as you can. Live life, live, love, enjoy life, and never think of them or me again. Love you, Curtis. Okay, so... What do we know? We know that we still know that Curtis or that Wintech is a, how do I get out of here? Oh no, there's no way to get out of. I think if you scroll back to the top, there was a zoom out button or something. There we go, okay. So Wintech is evil. They're doing horrible things. Um, Their dad was caught up in it. Curtis is, is, but at this point, we don't know that Curtis has been thrown into the, you know, into the void, right? Into the threshold. This is still, we're just piecing some stuff together. If we don't, if we, if we didn't know this game for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So really it's more, more than anything. It's just more of what we already know to be true. That WinTech is, is not good. But we also know that people are dying and Curtis is seeing himself in all kinds of different incarnations and he's questioning his own sanity and he's questioning whether maybe he's a part of this. So whatever it was that they did or that, that, that Wintech does, uh, Curtis might somehow be more involved than he thinks. That's what I, that's the conclusion I'm coming to. All right, let's get out of this creepy apartment. You think it's the time to get out of this creepy apartment, Chris? I think it's time to get out of this creepy apartment. All right, cool. Is there any mail? No, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, let's take a second. I haven't said hi to anybody yet. I'm sure there's been some... Let's look at some of the chats and such. Let me uh, come on over here. All right. Oh, gosh, there's a lot of stuff. Um... Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save. Chris, you didn't tell me to save. I did it all by myself. I don't need you to tell me how to do these things. Uh, I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you. But I don't think you can do it on this map screen. You'll have to go someplace all first. Right, I'm and gonna then... go to, I can't go to Borderline. I'll go to WinTech. Yeah, I think there is one Easter egg that you missed here earlier, but it might still be possible to get it. Okay, cool. So let's save. Um. Let's say, uh, back to work after letter, something like that. Okay. All right. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to, oh, you didn't even see me do that. You're watching me. I, I shifted over to the one window of me. All right. Stop shaking, man. Someone says restaurant has a big ghostly customer base. Yeah, 
Someone says, that's what I call dinner, the one, the one milkshake. Uh, Critical Moment says, I always feel like I'm home when we're at the Dreaming Tree. Dreaming Tree is a nice wine, too. A red blend. Interesting. Chris. Chris. Christodo, Christodolu. Great reaction from Trevor. Tried to comfort Curtis, but at the same time definitely feels like he was scared by what Curtis said. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's, Paul's good. Uh, someone wrote, what did the pre 3D printer print? Is there a th was there a 3D printer going on in the background that uh, we don't know about? Mr. I don't know how you could not know about it. <laughs> it is in the background of my camera shot. Aha, there you go. Oh, it's right. Oh, it's a, is it working right now? Yeah, it's it's just printing a doorstop at the moment. But, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I didn't notice. I, I, I didn't notice it because I don't notice things. As an actor, I just focus on myself, Chris. I don't look at other things. Of course. Um, Paul's getting the adventure gamer bug, doing the, the rounds, checking the standard places. Um, I don't, someone asked if that was Lorelai's voice as Blob. I thought the same thing. I, I can't say for certain, but it did sound like that to me. Um, and uh, who is the guest today? So D, I think, Demonomaniac, maybe you came in a little late, but uh, do, this is my, my our, our friend Chris, Patreon member, and little old me. stepping in for uh, for Daniel while he's out this month because because of our schedule change. And yes, I agree. Chris is a very good co-host. It's great having him here. All right, I think that's good for now. Let's uh, let's head on back. We've got probably another half hour or so of, of gameplay, and I'm really enjoying this. So let's get back to it. And it does seem like we're heading towards some potential danger um, all right so now I'm here you said there's a potential um, I have two doors I can go in and you said there's a um, Easter egg should we look for that first or should we just go exploring I want me get it out of the way I'll go ahead and go to that network room yeah let's do that <clears throat> I don't think it's short and sweet I don't think uh, Therese will be waiting for me in here oh he didn't shut the door okay so we got that, we got that. That's probably where I want to go, but let's see what's over here. All right. Will this ever, we, I've, I've clicked on this like a hundred times, I think, and I imagine at some point this is going to, there's going to be something. Do I want to hammer on the? You can try. <laughs> so. I just imagine that at some point this is going to have something for us, but it doesn't seem like that's the case now. So let's go on over to, oh no, get back in there. In fact, right here, while you're looking at yourself, this okay. is where you oh, go back. something. Okay, right here. Use the screwdriver on you five times. Is this where I jump around all over the place? Apparently it happens more than once and each time it adds points to your total. Oh really? On the uh Do I have to do five separate times? Two? Uh yes. Three. Four. Five. And then use the hammer on you once. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. There we go. All right. Part of the reason I got this job is I'm a very good hopper. All right. Good. So it's two of those. There's more of these to come, I suppose, huh? How do we take this game seriously? The, 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 how do we take the, the dr drama and the suspense? and the fear when he's bouncing around like that. I just, all right, so uh, nothing I can do here. Although I think eventually, I don't know, do I ever get back in here again? Doesn't seem like it. Do I wanna try to, is there any, am I, am I barking up the wrong tree here, Chris, by trying to get to the, get past the? Yes, you are. Okay, all right, fair enough. 
but there's nothing to see in here other than what we just did, right? There's nothing to get right now. Seems like no, that's all right. Pretty sure that's the only thing. Okay. But there's someplace else you can go. Yes, there is. Oh, I guess not. Oh, do I have a key? No, but I, it's not the key to that. So, but there's this way. No, I still can't go there. Eventually, I will. Well, there's nowhere to go. All right, I think it's I have to somehow get into the, I have to get into Warner's. So I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean here at WinTech. I meant there's other places you go could go. For example, don't you have an appointment? Oh, I gotta go see the doctor. All right. Does anybody really want to go see their their therapist? Or how do I get out of here? Um, whoops. No, that's not what I want to do. hallway and go see Dr. Hartberg. Okay. Hello, Curtis. How are you? Well, I've just bounced all over a, a room. I'm very shaken at this point. I can't point. help you if you lie to me. Fine. I think I'm losing my goddamn mind. Have a seat. Let's talk. That's why they gasped me. All right. Back to this. Okay. So here we go. Doctor, why did you want me to come back again today? That's not your standard policy, is it? No. No, it isn't, Curtis, but I can tell that we have a lot of work to do together. And I want to get the groundwork done right away. Is that all right? Fair enough. Okay, I am noticing that there is huge lag at this point. So I'm going to save. I'm going to come back to... You and me, Chris, and we can chat a bit. And I'm just going to save this, and uh, and then we will boot it back up. So now is the time to maybe get a glass of water. Anybody who's who's clinging to everything we're doing. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to save. Get this up, stretch your legs, hydrate, take exactly. care of yourself. Exactly. Uh, Doctor Herberg. Herberg. Two. Okay. There we go. Saving, turning off, and I'm going to bring it back. Um, yeah, so so let's see. Oh, I lost. So, Chris, I'll need to make sure I share with you again. Boy, any of you, the folks, you folks that do this regularly, especially if you have guests, and don't do it by yourself. I think it's probably much easier to stream on OBS as a as an individual. Um, but man, any of you that are doing what I'm doing, uh, I my hats off to you. <laughs> Anybody who can do it smoothly, because this is a. I mean, there's so much there's so much that's great about OBS. It's incredible that they, they've made it available for us for free. But boy, uh, it is tricky. Do you find that to be the case yourself? That Chris, tell us a little bit about your oh, streaming. Yes. What what is what is your uh, what is your what do you like to stream? Well, since you brought it up, yeah. I do stream. I have uh, my own channel here at twitch.tv slash sturmby. I stream twice a week and typically it's just a variety of things. Sometimes it'll be a point and click adventure game like this. Uh, other times it might be a, a horror game like Layers of Fear or just a casual chill stream where i'm playing some minecraft but um it's always something different um or an entire playthrough of a game you know yeah and what is and yes it is quite a, a challenge sometimes wrestling with obs to get it to do what i need it to absolutely but i think it's worth it yeah um okay well cool yeah please check Chris's streams out when and at some point Chris maybe feel free to throw that up on the in the chat so people can can oh, find yeah, you. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. See. And uh, <laughs> uh, let me I think we're back here. So let's give this a go. Okay. All right, let's hope this is a little bit more in sync. Okay. 
Okay, so now I have to show her stuff. Oh, I'm going to show her clearly the letter from my father. That's that's new, interesting stuff here. Let's mm -hmm. see. I found this letter that my father left me. It's a little close. I think it looks like something. this. Oh, I read the letter. The Threshold Project is not in itself an evil thing, Curtis. But as long as it is in the hands of Paul Warner and Wintech, nothing good can come of it. It is beyond the scope. Jesus, Doctor, does this sound like a crazy man wrote this? I don't think so, Curtis. It sounds perfectly rational to me. Okay, so that's why they don't have the, the voice. I still think the voiceover of, of Jonas reading it would be better than just me reading it. I'm going to hold to that. Um, is there, there's probably more to this than that. I knew it. Tell me the truth, Doctor. Cool camera angle. They're really good with the close-ups. Run in families. The background. Here she's soft focus. Yes, it can, Curtis. I wonder but if she's going to come into focus. Sort of That's a big cool thing. That sort of mental illness is generally chemical imbalance. Cinematographers like to do. And it's very, very treatable. Oh God. Oh God. Maybe I've always been crazy. I mean, I can't. I can't remember big chunks of my childhood. You're and upsetting yourself, Chris. Oh, Just God. try to relax and take a deep breath. You've got to stop it or I will. I'll kill you, you son of a bitch. After my father was murdered. Oh my God, I, I never saw him dead before. But after they hit him with the car, they got out and they shot him. Oh my God, they shot him. Suppressed trauma like this can cause such great emotional problems. I think you'll start improving now. Interesting, these long sort of pauses, like nowadays they would never have, you know, she would say, I think you'll start improving now, and it would be done like that. I mean, I, I mean, I, so much of this probably wouldn't be happening now, but they. Back then, they really weren't afraid to let it sit, uh, you know. Now, you know, watching my kids play games, there's just this need of, like, it has to happen every second. There has to be something going on. And I really, uh, there is something about the the slowness and the pace of this that is, it's almost a little off-putting nowadays, but it, it's really unique, and it's it's kind of interesting to watch, and I, I, I enjoy it. It's something I've always, always liked. Uh, let's see. Well, is there more? No, so there's no more. No more about the dad. Uh, do I want to do that? All right, now I just have to check and see if there's other stuff I have to talk to her about, right? Oh, yeah, what's this? I don't even know what this is. The threshold file. Well, we got to talk about that. I'm totally putting Dr. Harburg in, in jeopardy, giving her all these secrets. Doctor, I think that this threshold project, whatever it was, got shut down a long time ago, but... I think it's been reopened now. In fact, I think it's back in full swing. What makes you think that? A whole lot of little things. Files I've seen, conversations I've overheard. I think it's bad, Doctor. I think it's something that no one has ever tried to do before. Now, be sure you keep the difference between imagination and evidence clear in your mind, all right? Oh, you think I've been watching too much X-Files? <laughs> We had an X-Files actor on the screen, too. We were being very, very in the moment, very topical. All right, that's not going to work. The button? No. Oh, button. All right. Doctor, I think I might have killed Bob. Doctor, I think I lost a button on my pants. I don't remember doing it, but I can't get the idea out of my head. I, I hated him. I wished he were dead so many times. Well, that's highly unlikely, Curtis. Homicidal blackouts are extremely rare. Have faith in yourself. Do you really think that you could do something like that? Maybe. Another long, awkward pause. You know, again, I, I think that some I, I always enjoy those moments where you're watching the person listening as opposed to the person talking. And I thought uh, 
it was just fascinating seeing what was going through her head as she's hearing Curtis talk about something that really could have and probably did happen uh, with regards to his his culpability in the murder. And so, kind of makes me wonder whether or not they were planning to add some music undercurrents to that scene, especially right at the end. Yeah, you know, it's just, it sure feels like it, right? It sure feels like there's there should be something kind of helping that out. But yeah, it's a, it, that's it's very interesting. Um, I don't think the button's going to work anymore. The key. I did see the lace highlight when you Oh, did on it? it? I didn't earlier. see that. All right. Oh, you're right. I just had to put it in a different spot. My mother's hatred for me went, went way beyond humiliation and hitting. She, um, she tortured me. She, she did things to me that, um, you hear about happening in Chile and Nicaragua. Oh, I don't remember this at all. Wow. Curtis. My wig is coming to get you. Come here, Holy monster. Mackerel, what did she do? What's under that crawling, slimy skin of yours? It's all right, Curtis. It's over now. She's gone. You survived it. You're here, Curtis. Yeah, that's, uh, wow. So, so what's the story behind Curtis's mother? Cause so the dad is a part of Wintech and, oh, it's, it's because she knows in her heart that Curtis is not human that Kurt she has the mother's spidey sense that he is something abnormal it's driven dri driven her crazy and she's ended up doing horrible things because of this this thing I, that that's I guess that's my guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking to you Chris to see your thoughts on that it's either her mother's intuition or do we know whether or not Curtis's father told his mother about that after the incident? I don't think that's ever, I don't remember that. Um, and you never really Probably get a, not, yeah, you imagine. never really get a sense that the mom and the dad were, well, it didn't seem, you don't know if that was a, didn't seem like that was a happy marriage. You didn't really get much of that. So there's not a lot of backstory regarding that, but, but yeah, that's, that is some, boy, she did some whacked out things. All right. All right, so what's next? Is there more? Is there a key? No, a key doesn't do anything. Or does it? No. And this is what you guys all do. You just basically have to try everything. Mm-hmm. There we go. Look at that. We got something. On this date with Therese last night, I got my navel pierced. This S&M club on stage in front of a room full of people. Is that something that you wanted to do? Um, great lighting so. in this scene. I don't know. I just, I just wanted to be controlled at the moment, you know. I wanted Therese to do things to me. But when it was over, my feelings totally reversed. I, I wanted to control her. How exactly did you want to control her? When I got off the stage, she was right there, and um, I just, just pounced on her. And I, I, I took her into a bathroom, and we just did it. We just did it like a couple of animals. And how did she react to that? She absolutely loved it. <laughs> I thought she was going to break me in half. Curtis, did you ever consider that Maybe she was the one in control of everything? No. Uh, but you're probably right. Well, some interesting things there. Uh, I'm seeing some cool 
comments um, talking about pace, you know, people saying that not only uh, Boromir says, not only you value such slower pace sometimes, uh, like he does too, and I'm not exactly old yet either. Well, all right, thanks, man. I guess because. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit slower pace can make more room for thought and mood. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and hello, Willie the Worm. How are you doing? I think also for the time, says Chris, video was such a novelty and felt like high production value, so they didn't feel the need to cut too quick as long as they could fit it in on the CDs. Yeah, I think there's a lot of that. Um, you know, anybody who is, I'm noticing that the lag is significant right now, and it's, I don't know what to do with it. It's the same thing when I have, uh, have Chris join me. Um, his lag and it's all through zoom so there's something about obs on my macintosh computer uh that is not the sound just isn't lining up so either i just need to go buy a, a, a pc and 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 give over to this or if somebody has any kind of solution uh, uh for this i would love i would love some help so feel free to reach out to me um on Discord or uh, through my email, I'm just up with my email in uh, in here. But I, I could, I would love, uh, I would love to figure out this sound issue. It's very frustrating. Uh, so if there are any uh, OBS Zoom Mac geniuses out there, please get in touch with me. Um, okay, there you go. Uh, let's see. We're still hanging out, Dr. Harburg. He, someone wrote, and I thought that was funny. It's like, let's get on to lighter things. Therese. So yes, he's talking about. I think I'm a murderer. My dad was murdered, and man, I had incredible sex with Therese last night. So, I'm not sure where his priorities are at the moment. Seems like they're all over the, the place. The emotional roller coaster. The emotional roller coaster. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, what else? We had greeting card. No, we did the greeting card a long time ago. I think, uh, let's see. No. No. I think we've done all this other stuff before. Oh, looks like we have this. I had this experience with my coworker, Therese. We just talked about that. The sex was savage. He's such a bragger. Consensual? All the way around? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The doctor... She brought out feelings in me that... were frightening. I mean, wild, almost violent feelings. I felt like anything I wanted to do to her, anything I could dish out, she could take it. Boy, we are sure creating mood here, aren't we? Um, you know, I think she makes that the very first line she says is consensual. And and I think for many of uh, many people who played Phantas for the Phantas 2 for the very first time, I have learned over the last year were mostly teenagers at the time. Right. Uh, this was that way to kind of. They had heard about this game. They figured out a way to sneak it past their parents. And this was a huge uh, moment going from something very childlike to something very adult. Um, and I just, I imagine that this may have been the first time a lot of people heard that word, you know, consensual. S and meaning that people can have all kinds of different sexual experiences as long as it's consensual on both parties. And I, and I think that's a very important thing for anybody to hear, but especially when you're when you're young and impressionable and don't know what the hell you're doing yet. And I, I imagine that, that there, I've, I just had so many people reach out to me or, or just in throughout these conversations and comments that people have uh, said that there's been so many things in this game that have, you know, that kind of opened their eyes to, to different things. And I'm, I'm I feel very lucky to have been a part of, of that in, in that way. 
Um, so there's that. Anything else? Any thoughts on that? Any anything? Well, how old were you when you first played, Chris? Well, since this came out in what ninety six, I would say I was yeah I was uh, twenty one already at okay, that time. So you were so. You were, the, you were the audience that it was meant for, but the, but there was a lot of fourteen fifteen year olds that that got their hands on it. So was there uh, just uh, not to put you on the spot at all, but were there moments in this game that that were surprising to you in terms of uh, you know of of this these kinds of conversations? A little bit. Um, I found it, uh, quite interesting that the conversation was not being given a focus like it was on TV shows at the time. Um, and I was also quite surprised that they would go so far as to have that nudity and very brief nudity of course in right. a game because i thought that was just taboo on any video game period yeah yeah so that was quite a novelty yeah oh that reminds me uh by the way um one of uh my patreon members it goes by by nick nixon i think um he's from germany and he sent me today and i'm not going to show it i'll show it next week because i uh, this again sound being the continuous issue he sent me he's there are two separate versions. You know when Curtis uh, goes up behind Therese and she turns around and she's got the fangs and she kind of comes at him as mm -hmm. sort of a zombie. Well, apparently in the German version, it's a slightly different version. It's almost exactly the same, but it's obviously different. There's this weird, you know, for whatever reason, that was available and that's what came out in the german version so he showed them he sent them both to me back to back and i will share them with you mm -hmm. next week but whatever for whatever reason the sound didn't come through in the uh uh in in the files that he sent me so hopefully we'll get that ironed out and i can share that with you next week but it's really kind of cool and, and weird and i don't know why uh that's the case maybe i have to reach out to wes play it again and find out all right let's do a couple more and then um i think we will we'll start wrapping up in a little bit here um all right so it looks like picture of mom and dad after my mother started hating me i uh, my father got so weird he sort of withdrew and he just kept looking at me with those sad sad eyes did he protect you from your mother's irrational rages? He tried. Not hard enough. Oh, she hurt me. Oh, she hurt me so bad. Good, yeah, good scene. And those were those were the scenes when I, I feel, you know, I'm, I. There was a good environment on the set that day. I mean, I, I look at that and I don't cringe, you know. <laughs> so that's a that's a a good sign for an actor when you don't uh, completely hate the choices you made. I think there's some good stuff in in there, and it's emotionally real and honest and and well written and well filmed. And they created a, a good environment to 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 make those those scenes. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people copping to their ages. Uh, Goosey was 15 <laughs> when she, he or she uh, played it. Lisa was 14, uh, 18. Oh, for, uh, it was rated 18 in my country, says Jamie, and 14-year-old me still managed to buy it. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of young, young folks in there. Yeah, and Chris, you had talked about this being a. I am playing this on on. S scum vm um did, I, I did purchase the the gog or the gog version um was having trouble opening that and then daniel sent me his files or files through him and, and that's what we've been using so i am working through scum and i have an updated version and all that so anyways i'm i'm gonna i think i'm going to slowly opt out for the rest of the day so i think this i'm going to save right now 
Luckily, no deaths yet, but I think we're going to get into some really good Yay. killing next week. Um, so let me save this real quick. And then I will do my best. Uh, let's see. Uh, and to see if I can fix a few things next week, I'll do some do some research, reach out to some folks and see if we can get some some better better sound audio issues. Uh, Dr. Harburg. I'm uh, kind of surprised that you're having the audio lag issues because I have not noticed any on my end through Zoom here. Yeah, through Zoom, it's great. It's perfect. But like if you were, I, I'm imagining watching it uh, on either mm. YouTube or Twitch, but certainly I'm seeing it through OBS. It's really quite, quite behind. So um, let's see a few other things. These flashbacks remind me of the ones in Sleepaway Camp with the crazy ant. Oh yes, I remember that film. Oh, that's good. I'm gonna. All yeah, I have, I have. You know, this is the second video game I think I've ever played in my life. So I have, I have a few, few games to catch up on. So conversations with Curtis could go for the next thirty or forty years. Um, Gog probably uses the Scum version anyway. I keep telling you guys Most to subscribe likely. through Stream Elements. All right, well, I will double check and look at all of these comments and get back to folks. But I want to thank you all. Oh, I got 100 messages today with Restream. I got a congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for, for jumping in at the last minute. I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. You've been. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm yeah. honored to be here. Yeah, it's, just, it's, 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 it's great having you. And uh, next uh, week we will be uh, doing another round robin uh, with our guest hint keeper and uh i'm not sure uh, i'm gonna just say a contra who, who who's one of my patreon members um and and i'll let him tell me whether he wants me to use his real name or not when he joins next week but he'll be uh popping in he helps run the discord channel that we have he's put everything together for me there and so he'll be uh stepping in and then daniel will be back in february and so we'll do next week one more uh Fantas 2. Then the 23rd, we will have Jen Taylor join for our first conversation of 2022. And, uh, and then we'll uh, have some new stuff going on in, in February. So um, I do want to thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, hope you're all having a great week. Please consider joining us on you know, on all the social media stuff, please consider joining us on um, Patreon or any way you want to. It would, it would mean a lot. And am I missing anything else? I don't know. Any thoughts? I guess that's it. All right, Chris, any final Thank thoughts you on your end? No, just thanks for having me, and I look forward to next week. All right. Okay, guys, thanks so much for everything. Have a great rest of your week, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you real soon. Take care. Take care.